All right, we're going to switch into films with our syndicated film critic, Cheryl Rhodes. Cheryl's going to share one of his top 10 movie lists with us this morning. And this list actually revolves around actor Steve McQueen, who was also known as the King of Cool. Cheryl, thank you so much for being back with me today. Oh, thank you, Jenna. We, we often come on and we talk about uh, uh, the movie reviews that I write for Solaris Hill. Uh, and sometimes we talk about the books I publish with absolutely amazing ebooks, but we rarely talk about the movie column that I write for Paradise, which is on Thursday and the Key West Citizen. Mm -hmm. And uh, I write a column called uh, the Top Ten, and in it I do a countdown of the ten favorite movies by uh, this actor or that actor of this genre or that genre. Sometimes I'll have a guest columnist in uh, who will share their top ten. Uh, like a week ago, uh, we had uh, Brewster Chamberlain give us his 10 favorite foreign language crime movies. Mm -hmm. A little bit esoteric. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this week we have Su Susan Server telling us the 10 movies that we should have watched this summer as reruns but didn't. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, we have uh, uh, one coming up next week in Paradise uh, since Elmore Leonard, the writer, just died. Uh, our favorite top 10 movies uh, based on Elmore Leonard books. but. Today, exclusive for you, mm -hmm. uh, I created a top ten list of the best Steve McQueen movies. Mm -hmm. And I chose that because this coming week at Ibis Bay at the Dive In Movie, Michael Schultz is going to be showing Bullet, which is one of the favorite Steve McQueen movies. So I thought, let's just look at some of his better movies and see which ones we'd talk about. All right. Well, I thought you chose Steve McQueen because he's from Indiana, which is where I'm from. So. Well, <laughs> maybe I had a little of that in my mind. But, uh, <laughs> but, but Steve McQueen was a very interesting guy. I actually met him one time. I was invited uh, uh, back when I was the film critic for the Florida Times Union. I was invited to the world premiere of the Thomas Crown Affair. Mm -hmm. And I got to hang out with Steve McQueen. And uh, I can tell you two things about him. One is he was very small. He came up, I've got a picture of him coming up to my, just top of his head came up to my shoulder, and I'm not very tall. Mm -hmm. So he was a little guy, mm -hmm. uh, but he looked giant on the screen. Mm -hmm. The second thing is all he wanted to talk about was race cars. He oh, really? loved fast cars. He mm -hmm. loved race cars. And so we're starting off this top ten list with not one of his better movies, but one of his more favorite movies, which was Le Mans. And Le Mans was based on the French race circuit and he played a race car driver and he loved it and he didn't care whether it was a good movie or a bad movie he just liked driving those uh, those Porsche 917s around the streets of France at a uh, you know over 100 miles an hour mm -hmm. and so uh, our top 10 movie number 10 is Le Mans okay I like that and it's almost more of a documentary like movie not mm -hmm. much of a storyline uh, most of the movie is just racing cars and mm -hmm. so uh, you don't want to go see it at a drive-in because you'll probably get arrested leaving the drive-in by <laughs> just lead footing it out. Right. You, you might get that race car little drive in you too, I guess. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> the number nine movie that I picked is, uh, again, not a great movie, but it's a science fiction classic. And it deserves to be on the list because it was the first movie that Steve McQueen ever made, mm -hmm. The Blob. Mm -hmm. And The Blob was a monster from out of space that looked like an upside-down dish of of raspberry jello and it sort of like uh, uh, squirmed its way around and uh, uh, you know eight people just sort of absorbed them and Steve McQueen of course saved the day he figured out that uh, uh, it was uh, afraid of, of cold mm -hmm. and so he had everybody get fire extinguishers which have uh, you know sort of compressed uh, uh, you know a cooling kind of stuff in them and and uh, they, they, they killed off the monster, which was about to eat them all uh, trapped in a diner. <laughs> well, thank goodness he was the hero and could save everybody. <laughs> and this was his first movie, and it, and, and, it, and it proved that he could be a box office star. Mm -hmm. Now, keep in mind, Steve McQueen had a sort of a murky childhood. He spent most of his youth uh, in uh, reformatory schools. He was a bad boy. Mm -hmm. And yet, by 1976, he was the highest paid movie star in the world. Well, good so, for him. Good so, for him. you know, he didn't stick with the horror movies, uh, yeah. the grade B movies. Mm -hmm. Number eight is a movie that not many people have seen, and it didn't do well at the box office, but it's really a, quite a nice movie. It's called The Reavers, mm -hmm. and it's based on a William Faulkner novel. And it's a very comic uh, turn of the century in Mississippi story about 11-year-old boys coming of age, and he is sort of uh, ushered into this with this older teenager played by Steve McQueen. 
And Steve McQueen is playing a teenager when he was, I don't know, he probably was 40 years old or something at the time, but, but he pulls it off and he does it quite good and he shows what is unusual for his movies is he shows that he has a sense of comedy. He, he does a good job making you laugh. Mm -hmm. But you don't think of Steve McQueen as a, as a comic. You don't think of him as having done funny movies. Mm -hmm. But The Reavers, that's a little known gem that's worth seeing. Number seven is The Cincinnati Kid. And The Cincinnati Kid was kind of uh, reminiscent of uh, the Paul Newman movie a few years earlier, The Hustler. In The Hustler, Paul Newman is a pool shark uh, and it's about, uh, you know, kind of pulling off the great uh, score. Uh, in The Cincinnati Kid, Steve McQueen again establishes himself as the epitome of cool mm -hmm. and he plays poker and he's sort of a poker shark. And so it's quite a good little movie. It's a lot of uh, uh, amazing suspense uh, for a movie sitting around a table playing poker. I like it. <laughs> the, the number six movie on our list is The Getaway. And the reason that I put that on the list is that not only was it directed by Sam Peckinpah, who is one of the great action directors, he did The Wild Bunch, and uh, uh, he made, uh, he sort of introduced realistic uh, westerns and movies where, uh, you know, the bullets actually look like they're hitting you, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And with The Getaway, uh, it's about a ex-con who uh, has a heist that goes bad, and he and his girlfriend try to get away in a fast car. Well, of course, you know, fast cars appeal to Steve McQueen. Right. He likes those cars. He does. <laughs> but more important is that his girlfriend that he was getting away with was Allie McGraw, who at the time was married uh, to Robert Evans, one of the big Hollywood moguls. Uh, she had become famous in Love Story with Ryan, with Ryan uh, O'Neill. And uh, uh, she fell in love with Steve McQueen, and uh, they got married. She divorced her husband. They got married. And uh, she was one of his three wives. Okay. And uh, she was... Uh, uh, behind him by the time I met him, so uh, he had his new, his last wife with him, and uh, uh, she was quite nice. But they all had, all of his wives seemed to me, to have kind of a sameness about them. They were all pretty women with short, dark hair. Mm -hmm. And so I guess he had a type. Yeah, that must have been his type. All uh, right, number five? <laughs> number five. Uh, uh, this was the movie I went to the premiere to meet him, The Thomas Crown Affair. Uh, Pierce Brosnan redid the movie and did a great redo, but the original one is sort of dear to my heart because it was Steve McQueen and Faye Dunaway, and he plays against type. Uh, you think of Steve McQueen as being kind of a rough and tumble kind of guy, but he plays a Boston banker, mm -hmm. a very wealthy guy who pulls off a big art thief, uh, art theft. Mm -hmm. uh, he steals paintings, and uh, Faye Dunaway is an investigator trying to catch him. Uh, any way she can. And it has that great scene in it where they make playing sex look sexy, uh, playing chess mm -hmm. look sexy. Mm -hmm. uh, they have a chess game where uh, just the deliberation of the moves looks almost like flirtation. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, it's a great movie. It was directed by Norman Juleson. Mm -hmm. And uh, Steve McQueen uh, was there at the world premiere along with uh, Jack Weston and Paul Burke and some of the others. And uh, he was just, you know, uh, like, like a god that everybody was bowing to, mm -hmm. but all he wanted to do was talk about racing cars. <laughs> <laughs> Back to that racing cars. <laughs> Back to the racing cars. Well, our number four movie is uh, one, uh, 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 quite a good movie called Papillion. And uh, it's, it's, uh, the name comes from the butterfly stage, that sort of thing, and it's about a prisoner on a uh, prison island, uh, sort of a, a desperate uh, situation and uh, planning to escape and coming out of that. A great performance, uh, one of his better performances. Uh, then after that, number three, uh, one of my favorite movies. It's actually a remake of a Japanese movie. It's, uh, it's a remake of, of Seven Samurai, which is one of the classic Jap Japanese movies. And it's a movie called The Magnificent Seven. Mm -hmm. And Yul Brynner stars in it, and he puts together a group of seven gunfighters, whatever, to help him protect a Mexican family from, uh, you know, uh, bad guys. Mm -hmm. And Steve McQueen uh, uh, is up against uh, uh, other soon-to-be stars, uh, like Charles Bronson, like James Coburn. Uh, and Steve McQueen holds his own. He steals the scenes from Yul Brynner, who was a much uh, more experienced actor at the time. Uh, I met I met Yul Brynner once. Uh, you know, you remember him, famous for The King and I, with mm -hmm. the bald head and all that. Mm -hmm. And uh, Steve McQueen would just do little things like adjust his gun belt or his hat or whatever, mm -hmm. and just take the audience's attention 
right away from Yul Brynner. Uh, okay. And it's a great movie. It's a fun movie. If you want to see a Western, it's one of the great Westerns. All right. And now we're running out of time, so give us the, the top two. The top two. The, top uh, the one that's playing this Wednesday night at Ibis Bay, Bullet. Mm -hmm. And Bullet is famous for Steve McQueen driving a Mustang GT through the streets of San Francisco, up the hills, down the hills, all over the place at speeds over 110 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, you, you'll just be thrilled with this movie. It's probably his signature movie. It's probably the movie he's best known for. Mm -hmm. And the number one movie I picked, just because it's a great movie, is The Great Escape. Mm -hmm. uh, about World War II prisoners breaking out of a prison camp. It's famous for Steve McQueen's uh, motorcycle jump over the wire to make his escape. Uh, as it turns out, he didn't really ride the motorcycle. Mm -hmm. Even though he was a racer, he loved that sort of stuff, the studio wouldn't let him do the danger stunts. So uh, there was a, a stunt man who rode the motorcycle, and it was the same stunt man who drove the car in bullet. All right. Well, he likes adventure, that's for sure. It that's sounds true. like Steve McQueen. Cheryl, thank you for being back on with us this morning. Yeah. Be sure to check out Cheryl's movie reviews every Thursday and Sunday. Mm -hmm. You do a top 10 list on Thursdays, just your weekly column on Sundays. All right, I'm going to take a quick break right now. I'll be right back after these messages.